the COVID piece. That's something too. We'll get into talking about like what the best piece is. Right. Uh, sure. we're, li we're live now, guys. All right. So we'll give it a minute to let people get on. And uh, we're Facebook live in. Is that what's happening? Everything live, right? Yeah, we're live. We're in Facebook. And uh, we just got to get people to jump on. They get notified. Let's see here. I'm going to mute myself just for a second because I'm going to do a little Instagram post just to try to drive some people here real quick. Okay. Hey, guys. Thanks. Who's uh, who's okay? Omar. Hey, buddy. Omar is ready on. All right. Live comments. I got to click on that. There we go. There we go. Love it. So, hey, guys. We're here. I am literally going live here. We've got Todd Swaggerty, the king of direct mail. This guy absolutely crushes it. Um, we're going to have a great interview here. Jump on. The link is in my bio. So the link is in my bio. Jump on. It's going to be lit. He's going to talk about this guy knows more about marketing, direct mail than anybody else I know out there. The guy is super, super sharp. Jump on. The link is in my bio. Hey, Bo, where um, the best place to just in that um, in that group is the best place where it's going to be streaming? Yeah, it streams to a couple other places, but that's where. Kind of the push is, if you will. Yeah. OK, and then I don't want any feedback. Let's see. I'll turn the volume all the way down. There we go. Sweet. There we go. There we go. Cool. Are you able to toggle the uh, comment now, Bo? Is that something we're going to be able to do the little pop in? And... Oh, yeah. Come on. That's easy. Okay. Hey, nice. there we go. Dale, That's awesome. thanks for joining, Dale. This, this, when it shows up yeah. like this. Yeah. Shout out. Shout out. <laughs> yeah. So see everybody. That? See that there, Tom? Nay, I got it. Awesome. Loving the learning. Loving the learning. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, we're going to start here in just a minute. I'm going to share it in a couple other Facebook groups. Okay. Let's see here. Where's everybody from? Dale, where are you from? All right. Let's see here. This is good. See if I can. San Fernando. Okay, so we're representing mostly California at this time. Okay. We'll get started here in one minute, guys. People are still coming on. Give them time. All right, it's hot here in Vegas. It's, uh, I think it was about 90 today, so it's starting to heat up. Summer's uh, finally here. Yeah. What part of San Diego are you in? I live in a place called Bay Park, which is just kind of where, if you, you're you in San Diego, where Mission Bay hits the freeway, we're up on the hill there. Nice. San Diego is yeah. my, my, my favorite city in all of California, for sure. There's no doubt about that. It's cool, man. I, I was born and raised here, uh, so I don't know much else. But it's changed a lot, but still, it's still a great city. We just have so many borders. You know, we got Mexico, we have Camp Pendleton, the ocean, and there's only so far east you can go. So it's like our little own private island. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Let me just one more share. And then, uh, where's are you? Okay. Okay. All right, Tom, let me get started. Okay. All right. So, hey, everybody, this is uh, somebody's got feedback. I don't know where it is. Maybe if you turn down your volume a little, Todd. 
Know me? Sure. Let me go. I'm at 73. Now, how are we doing? Better? Yeah, yeah, I think that's better. Anyways, hey guys, uh, this is uh, another episode of Survive and Thrive. I think this is week. I, I lost track of time, but it's been uh, since what is it? Week seven, eight, week seven eight, or eight, seven or eight, and every week we've had phenomenal conversations. And tonight's going to be another another amazing conversation because if if you've been listening to what everybody's been talking about the last couple of weeks there's a couple of ways to market direct to sellers right it's either you're going to pick up the phone or you're going to text or you're going to send direct mail okay and people the majority are either doing i would say the majority of our contacts are doing uh it's probably a 50 50 split between all the people we've talked to about direct mail and, and calling i personally love direct mail and I'm, I'm excited for, for, for tonight because um, I've had good success with my direct mail. And now that I have Ty interested in buying in the Midwest with me uh, and he can handle acquisition and disposition, uh, then I think we've, we've got a team. Um, and uh, Ty had me on a conference call today at noon and it was, it was awesome today. He, he has some amazing connections and uh, he knows Todd, obviously. But uh, I'm really excited. We're going to keep these going. I know uh they're starting to loosen up a little bit and 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 people are going to go out of the house soon um but we plan on doing these thursday nights and keeping them going uh we love your feedback we want you to share these with colleagues it's important to share so we can get a bigger reach we want to help as many people as we can we want to as ty says squat up and um that's that's kind of the intention of of why we set out to do this so um, it's really important to to share this and and also in our Facebook group, guys. We're we're um, we're like thirty people under ten thousand members. So go into that Facebook group and invite colleagues, okay? Because I want that. I want to make this the biggest group Facebook group out there. Um, which we're about the big ones are about a hundred thousand people. So we got a long ways to go. But I know with the value Ty's bringing in with these live streams and the connections he has. We're, we're, we're really poised to bring in a lot of additional speakers because speakers want to come when there's an audience. So we, we, we want you to, to engage. We want you to ask questions. And uh, I'm going to let Ty kind of do run from here. So Ty, without further ado. Right on. Cool. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Thank you guys for watching. And I want to just say I'm really excited for today. Uh, we have my friend Todd Swaggerty in the house on the live stream. Um, what I want to share, it was interesting. I went to an event. We don't have to say whose event it was, Todd, but sure. Todd and I spent a lot of money to be in that room. And it was a very, very small group. This was a long time ago. This was probably eight years ago, Todd. That 2013, it? somewhere around there. Yeah. 2013. And we spent, I forget what it was. I want to say it was a $10,000 event. Is that? Yep. That was it. Yeah. No, that was it. Yeah. Okay. 10, 10 we spent 10 K and it was pretty good. Um, but I always joke and say that the best value of what I got out of that $10,000 meeting was the fact that I got to meet Todd <laughs> and, and Todd, Todd's amazing in a lot of, in so many ways. And I'll just share that Todd ha runs his company, yellow letter HQ. Um, he absolutely is one of the sharpest guys I know when it comes to, uh, wholesaling, direct mail understanding marketing. He's in some very, very high level mastermind groups that he participates in, helps share. I, I, I'll let you share more about that yourself, Todd. Um, I know he spends a ton of money reinvesting in his education. He also flips. He also invests. Um, I think he has an incredible background. I'm going to let him tell his backstory. Uh, but Todd is a wealth of knowledge. So obviously, thank you, Todd, for being on with us. All right, man. Hey, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate all those kind words and um, happy to be here. Absolutely. Love it. So why don't you just share with so with the listeners, some of the people out there, I know some people know you, some people don't share yeah. your backstory, kind of even going back to the fire department. I think that's important and just kind of transitioning into real estate, the contracting, kind of tell your story. Sure. Yeah. So in another lifetime, you know, at the age of 16, I wanted to be a fireman. Right. And so I did that career for 15 or 16 years until I got married and started to want to have a family. 
And I realized, you know, that's a great job. Um, and I wanted that. And I didn't really understand the terms that I'm about to share with you now, but I really wanted to kind of live life on my own terms, right? And I wanted to be responsible for myself, for my, for my income. And I knew that working for um, a, uh, a government agency like that wasn't going to do it. So this is 2008. And that's when the, uh, the crash happened last time. And I got found myself doing the REO stuff I was doing. I had the, country, the contract for Countrywide in San Diego where I was doing the grass cuts, maid services, trash outs. I'm like, yeah, heck, this is awesome. And that, that transposed to, well, this is still kind of like working for a company, not really working for me. Because again, what I wanted to get, get from my life is freedom of time freedom of money and freedom of relationship. And I kind of thought I had that with the fire department government job at first, but as I got a little older, I just realized, Hey, that wasn't it. So the the freedom of time, money and relationship was really what I was after. And I didn't kind of know it then I had to kind of, I, I knew what it was I wanted. I didn't really know how to even say it. I just knew I wanted something more. And so we started doing that started making a bunch of money. I'm like, okay, this is great, but this still really feels like I'm working for somebody. So I said, hey, you know, I see all these guys that are hitting me up when I'm doing these, these grass cuts and maid services. They want to know when's the next ones to come on the market. They're going to give me $1,000 to $2,000. I'm like, well, wait a second. Why are you going to do that? And so I found out that I was finding out about the properties before any of the agents, before anybody, and they wanted my list. I'm like, well, why? The, do, no one's buying these. And so I started talking to agents and started talking to these, some of these investors. And I realized, hey, people are buying these. And they're making a bunch of money. So I'm like, hey, I've watched those flip shows. I've worked in construction before. I'm a fireman. I'm a big tough guy. Just ask me, I'll tell you. And so I started doing fix and flips. And I'm like, hey, this is still kind of more independent. It's working, you know, for myself. And, you know, I was still trying to figure out my the whole business thing. I knew that I came from a fireman background. I'm good at hustling, getting a job done. I don't have a sales background necessarily. It's not really kind of my thing. And so, you know, how does this all fit in? What, I'm, what am I going to do? So I started buying fix and flip properties from agents 2013, 14. That kind of started to shrink up a little bit in San Diego. And I met a guy named Luis Santaveros who wholesaled me a property. And he ex told me how he did it, how he was sending out postcards to sellers. And he was getting stuff under contract. I'm like, that's exactly what I want to do. Because that, for me, is the complete control. And now I can design my freedom of time, money, and relationship. I can control all of that now. Before, with dealing with real estate agents, which is not bad. It's a good strategy. Um, it just felt very, it felt a heck of a lot more independent. So then my next step was, well, you know, I get this whole marketing stuff. And I sort of figuring out sales. But I, and at that time it was, it was letters, right? Letters is what you, you sent letters and postcards and letters were like 70 or 80 cents. I'm like, well, shoot, 70 or 80 cents. You know, I'm a pretty engineer minded kind of guy. I'm going to make, I'm going to do this myself. So I started, I went out, bought all the machines to do a, a kind of a low scale production tie. I, I think he was even uh, came by way back then and, and checked it out. And uh, so it was a pretty efficient operation. And I'm like, okay, this is great. This is really something I can scale. And so who I was servicing at that point were other peers like Ty and, and other friends of mine in the real estate game. So my job then was to know as much about, about it as I could, produce the best price and get it done for them really, really quickly. Okay. And so that kind of um, made its way on year over year where it kind of became, for lack of a better word, in the business sense, my main squeeze where that that business uh, kind of took over. And um, since that five, six, seven years, we've grown to the largest direct to seller mail house in the country. And my job now is to one, number one, make sure that my team and my staff of 15 uh, 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 provide the promises we make to our clients and customers. And it's also to, to put my ear to the ground. So I have to think if not, there might be somebody equal, but maybe somebody a little bit more, but um, that talks to more uh, sellers or more, sorry, uh, fixed to flip investors um, than me, because that's what I do half of my day. And, you know, as the pressure got greater in 2018, 2019, my ear was the ground even more. 
and I began to learn a lot about every facet of, of, of marketing in our space, you know, because my feeling was as soon as I have a competent, uh, um, all around, well versed investor, they're not just going to be in direct mail. They're going to be in text marketing. They're going to be cold calling. They're going to be doing all sorts of things. So I was able to help in, in every direction. So that's kind of where we're at now. Um, and um, yeah, that's kind of, kind of just a quick summary of, of me and uh, who we are. I love it. I love it. I love it. And, you know, one thing too about Todd is he's humble, right? So this guy is the MacGyver for the young, for the younger folks. MacGyver was a TV show where <laughs> this guy would be stranded somewhere and he would take a nine volt battery and he'd take some part off a car engine and then he would like duct tape it and wire it. And then somehow he would have like, that would be an auto dialer or something like <laughs> that's MacGyver. So Todd is a true modern day MacGyver. And what I love about Todd is he, he, he's being very humble when he says he has an engineering mindset. This guy definitely jumps into things, tears it apart, figures it out. I mean, I got to say that out of everybody I know, you know, and I know a lot of, you know, pretty, a lot of really sharp investor marketers, guys that do a lot of different types of marketing. But I've got to say that you are on the leading edge because you have so much exposure. Yeah. Yeah, I do have a lot of exposure. And one of the best things I learned as a fireman was, was about the fundamentals and mastering them. And as investors, as entrepreneurs, we are huge on the, the shiny object, right? And I, I know it different. And so I've, I've kind of already gone down every single hole that you could, could go down. And, and I'm a filter for all that information. And so we've been able to, to take in all that, talk to everybody, what's going on, what's working, what's not working, just get to the meat and potatoes and really simplify the, the process for people and explain it in, into a way that's very simple. Because let, let's face it, direct mail is not necessarily so dynamic. It's not. There's a lot of things you can think of and think up that might, could, could, you know, woulda, coulda, shoulda type of possibilities, but there's only a few things that are still working, you know? And um, being consistent is, the mail piece is one thing. That's great. You know, you can't create a seller out of a mail piece. And that's what a lot of people in, in the direct mail industry do as a marketing tool. And they try to say, hey, okay, hey, the, the red ink is going to be the one that scientifically shows you're going to get the highest response rates, you know, things like that. And the really the things that matter in direct mail are, number one, data. Data is your biggest thing. Filtering your data, niche list, we can go, we'll go into data, we'll talk about that a little bit. But being very, very deliberate and very, very intentional with your data, being very, very consistent and very, very organized on your your uh campaigns on your uh, on your schedule. And then the other part is is the mail piece and and obviously, you know, the sales process. So it's just really important not to focus on the mail piece as your control piece. It's not your control piece. You are the control piece by way of having well-rounded picture, right? Having um, sending to the appropriate leads consistently and allowing that three to six to four you know, the window somewhere in there of momentum to gather while your those leads are coming in because a lot of times with direct mail people will send stuff out. Oh shit! I I just spent two or three thousand dollars in marketing. I got nothing. But that marketing, that mail piece, that postcard, that letter is sitting in that top desk drawer for that seller when the time is right for them, and you made a connection with that. And and so not all of our sellers are ready right now. You have a big pool of sellers just not all ready to contact you right now, but direct mail is the only medium that sticks with them. And so creating a mail piece that is memorable to them and they want to keep is more important than the ink color or all of that. So I saw a question pop up. I don't know if you want to go to a question or. You know, we'll, we'll, I want to ask one other thing and I want to stamp, establish this. This is my mind still spins off of it. Yeah. You and I were talking few weeks ago, a month ago, and you said something to me that I was just like, oh my goodness. Like you said, and I'm going to ask the question, how much money last year, your company, how much did you guys spend in postage to the U.S. post office? Yellow letter HQ. How much did Yellow letter HQ spend? Yeah. 
Uh, close to six and a half million dollars in just postage to the post office. Close to six and a half million dollars in postage for 2019. Yeah. Yes. I want everybody at home to listen. He said he said it right. Six and a half million dollars in postage. So when we say that Todd is an authority when it comes to direct mail, he basically controlled, spent six and a half million dollars for his clients right. who spend money with him. And I'm guessing too, your clients are repeat clients, right? I mean, it's the biggest, the biggest all big, small, medium investors all over the country, correct? I mean, right. talk about that. Right. And so we have uh, investors all the way down from first timers, you know, medium two to 3,000 pieces to to people who spent, you know, spent 400,000 pieces a month. So the um, the pendulum, you know, is all over the place. In a business like mine, you need scale, right? And so that's how you get it. And so uh, what I've been thankful for, though, is I have a great team, and a lot of my time is not spent with just strictly um, is not based strictly on just managing all that because it, it's it's tough. It, that's a, it's a tough business. It's a hustle. My guys hustle. We get the mail out. You know, if something's approved today. It goes out the mail tomorrow. And so <clears throat> that a lot of stuff is handled and my time is spent with peers like Utah and other guys figuring out what the heck is going on and, 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 and what's working. Cause that's as my business owner, myself as a business owner, that's my job to filter out all that kind of stuff, be poking and prodding ear to the ground. What's working, what can we do to make it better? And um, so, yeah, yeah, it's, it's been, it's been a great thing. I love it. I love it. So I'm going to go ahead and, throw the microphone back to Bo and then Bo, why don't you tee up some of these great questions? Sure. Let's start with Omar here. What are your thoughts on a huge mailing campaign or a smaller one that is done consistent in a specific area? How much of each? Right. So Omar, um, a lot of this stuff I'm going to say depends. Now I'm not going to give you that gray of an answer. Don't worry. But there's a lot of things, the factors that come into play here. But let's just talk about thoughts on a huge mailing campaign or a smaller one. Well, you know, it just depends on who you are, right? If you're a guy or a gal sitting in an office and you're an agent and or investor, right? And so you're going to want to uh, deploy capital, right? Because direct mail is like taking, is, is leveraging capital, right? So you take a couple bucks, you leverage that couple bucks to do a mail piece, come out, leads come back in. You got your other hustle picking up the phone and doing all that. So it just really depends on what you are as the investor. Now, let's say you are a fix and flip investor. The number one thing you can do for the best lead source, and it's a little bit more work because you're, 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 you're exchanging them. Which one do I want? Hustle or leverage of, of money? You know, and they're, they're two different things. So if you're doing a small campaign, your best time is spent doing it for driving for dollars. Sounds monotonous, sounds boring. But I know I was talking to a client today out of Utah that, you know, over 40 percent and he does 10, 15 deals a year, over 40 percent of his deals. He doesn't do just direct mail. He does the, the full gamut, the full spectrum. But still, 40 percent of his deals come from driving for dollars. He has a couple of people out there in the universe that drive for dollars all day long. So a big shop can do that. A medium shop can do that. And a small shop can do that. And so if you're going to do a small campaign because you want to leverage uh, capital, maybe it's not available to you. That's perfectly OK. You're going to be leveraging that hustle. So it's going to be uh, direct to, uh, dr driving for dollars, you know, for a smaller list. If you're doing a farm area, if you're an agent that that does listings and, uh, and also buys things for cash, a farm area is a great way to do this. And so with a farm area, you're going to want to select whatever audience, right, that you're most familiar with. I mean, a perfect example is my, I live here in Bay Park, and there's, there's a real estate agent called Russ Eccleson. That gentleman, I see him once a month drop off a flyer on my doorstep. We're in an area of probably four to 5,000 homes. I see him once a month. The guy kills it. And that's his one strategy, right? And so your one strategy could be direct mail in your, that farm area, that three to 4,000 people. And you hit that maybe every three weeks. Everybody in that area knows you. 
everybody. And they're getting this, your, your postcard or what have you. So you're, you're focused in. Then there's other people who say, well, you know what? I, I want a bigger team. I want more than that. And so these are people who are, are getting bigger lists, right? They're maybe doing absentee. They're doing niche lists. Niche lists is something I kind of glazed over. I'll get to it here in one second. But they're getting uh, a little bit wider on that, right? And so you have niche lists. You have broad niche lists. And then you have broad lists, right? So the niche lists are going to be the driving for dollars, the probates and all of that. And those are going to be guys who kind of, kind of, you know, are trying to start the game a little bit wider. And then you have the uh, broad lists, right? And those broad lists are are going to be a leverage. You're going to you're going to use a lot of cash. You're going to suck up some cash on that, and you're going to have to um, uh, be really consistent with it. And so. To answer the question, which one is best, it all depends on the person, right? It all depends on what you are designed for. If you want a big team, you have the cash to leverage that cash and turn it into ROI, maybe, you know, five or six times ROI on a, you know, four to $5,000 spend, or you don't have that, that cash to do an ROI, then you want to go into the niche stuff. I know I kind of went in circles on that one. I apologize about that. And if I didn't answer that question that great, which I didn't, Omar, uh, go ahead and shoot it again. You did but, great, man. No, you did great because that's Omar. Yeah, I know Omar yeah. real well. That's what. So that's kind of it. it. There's, no, there's no real uh, definite answer on that other than you because I do know guys who kill it on the niche. That's their mindset. That's who they are. They have to squeeze every dollar out of everything that they do. They have to be really, really efficient in it. Or, hey, I want to take over the world, and then they go big. They spend a bunch of dough. And they're really successful at it. Both both parties can be really successful at it. So, yeah. So, so, so Todd, um, what about providing lists? Or does your company provide lists? I mean, what do you what are your recommendations there? Yeah. Again, it's kind of who the the user is and who the area is, right? Do we provide lists? We do in in the sense of we have um, a list source uh, discount that we can. Uh, offer to people at uh, three cents, right? So there's that. Um, but, you know, a lot of agents, you know, they have access to core logic type data and filtering. There, there's things like prop stream and stuff like that. So really, it comes down to, again, what kind of per, what kind of investing are you doing? Are you going to do the niche stuff? If you're going to do the niches, and let's talk about those, probates, tax delinquent, evictions, um gosh i'm just drawing a blank right here right now but we all know know what they are you know uh then if you're going to stay niche and that's two to three to four thousand records that you're going to hit every month then you might want to go and hire a web scraper off of upwork go into your county records find out where these things are located do a screencast omatic screenshot of this right and so you're showing this guy exactly what records you want to pull and when and he does this this web scraper for you that you press on or off, right? And these leads will be scraped weekly or, or monthly. And you start to accumulate now all of these niche leads directly from these sources that these people get for the probates or a dollar and, and all of this. And it sounds, you know, I'm skimming over some stuff here. I kind of am. But the reality is it's just not that hard. If you are an engineering mindset kind of person, you're a tactical person, you can really figure this stuff out re really easily. Then you can go buy them. Too. You know, successors data, uh, listability. Um, what's the uh, what's the ones for probate stuff? Uh, lead probate list? data. Probate data. And you can go that direction, you know. And then there's the predictive modeling, uh, like Audantic. So if you're in, in you, could, you could use these both ways. I know. Uh, clients who use uh, Audantic, which is a predictive modeling tool for both their brokerage and for their uh, fix and flip game. And it's a hot or not list. It's expensive. It's 15 grand a year per county and it's exclusive. So if somebody else has it, you don't. And I, some of my most successful clients use that list. And there's a list about 20,000 uh, records on average, you know, for per county. And really what he goes into, my belief is what he does. He's a little secretive about it. But my belief, he goes into all the sold data, gets all these data points, and goes back into the marketplace and sees who's actually selling for cash in your market. 
and goes and pulls that. So predictive modeling can be done by a lot of agencies. That's one of the one that has it dialed in the best, right? And that's where the most of the mid to large um, direct to seller investors are. And some of the larger agencies that also have brokerage are just wide open, right? They're doing everybody with that equity and they're going with their hair on fire. And if they can't convert the deal into a fix or flip, then they're, they're putting it on their brokerage and they're, they're turning it into where some guys are trying to get eight times, eight to 10 times on ROI. They're maybe, you know, getting five to six times on their money, but it's a bigger pot of money that, which means it's a bigger game for, for them and they're killing it that way. So there's something out there for everybody, whether you're super niche, you're really dialed in on your stuff. And if you're super niche, you're very efficient with stuff. You're going to be drawn towards all those niches and you're going to go get them and you're going to kill it that way. And then, you know, direct mail is just one part of the game. You're going to be in one of those categories. So there's three categories, there's a niche, the broad niche, like Audantic and doing list stacking. Um, and then there's the just regular absentee inequity. If you're in one of those categories, you probably already know who you are and what category category that, that you fit into. Once you've defined that, you've decided that, hey, this list for me provides results, right? And you can you're gonna start with a postcard. We'll go into to mail piece real quick. You're gonna start with the postcard. But once you go into a list and you're getting deals off of it. Especially right now, you're going to convert that and then you're going to go to a letter. Does it cost close to double? Yes. But here's the deal. You're going to send a postcard and you're in the direct to seller space. You're at half a percent uh, response rates. As soon as you jump up to a letter, it's, 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 a, it's a 1% to 1.3% response rate. Now, this is just on average. And then you can step up over that is the real handwritten stuff. Or there's agencies, mine is one of them, that, that handwrite stuff. And that's up in the two and three uh, percent response rates. So basically, you're, you're, if you're the first time doing it right, you're, you're going to be doing postcards. You're going to be doing it for two or three months. Okay, I'm getting deals here. This is a 36 cent postcard, something like that. I'm going to jump up to a 59 to a 60 cent letter. And the, when you start doing the numbers on that, it, it, it works out uh, to, your, to your advantage, right? And it increases that ROI. I will say one thing about direct mail. If you're not getting four to five times return on your money, then you probably have a list problem or a process in-house problem, not a mail piece problem. So keep those those things in mind. I okay. love it, dude. You threw so much there, dude. All right, I know. That's so I, get, good, man. I get all excited about this shit. I'm sorry. I love it. You know, because you know what? I'm writing notes here because you're talking about web, web, uh, doing scra web, web scrapers and and I mean, Audantics, I, I had heard about it. I still haven't got on it about yeah. predictable modeling. There's so much good information for people that are just getting started, as well as somebody who's advanced in doing the business right now, how to yeah. scale that up. So that's huge. Keep going with questions, Bo. Okay. So uh, Thatch, uh, Thatch asked, uh, um, he's on my, Thatch, jump into the Facebook group. You're on my personal page, streaming there. But anyways, Thatch asked, um, Based on your experience, which category categories do you think are the best to mail to? Um, and he's asking absentee, fixer or teardown houses, foreclosure, two to four units or four to 50 units. <laughs> well, this is where that sounds like somebody who is uh, um, uh, a real estate agent. Uh, in the way that they view, view this kind of stuff. And, that, and that's awesome. So as a real estate agent or as an investor, even if you're not, you really want to dig into your soul, right? You want to see what is selling for cash in your market. I still do that in my market. Every week, every month, for me, it's Property Radar. I love that site. Um, I go into Property Radar and I see what is selling for cash. And I look at that property that was sold. Okay, what what what? what what was on the deed history there? What happened? Was there an interfamily transfer deed? Uh, can I tell by looking at it by the old addresses? Was it absentee property? Uh, do I see notice of defaults on there? You know, lately notice of defaults, all that stuff. No. Um, uh, foreclosures, pre foreclosures, hammered, way hammered. Um, and those are smaller lists. And so to answer that gentleman's question, 
If you're in the smaller list game, don't go where everyone else is at. Uh, another story, a friend of mine, uh, had his, he's an investor, has had his father pass away. And uh, he was the executor. He was nowhere on it, right? Uh, his father's passed away. He was the executor. And with after he passed away, he got around 60 to 70 mail pieces within a month, right? So we all know about probate. And so we just totally saturated tons of letters. We had, He got two phone calls, right? And people went and skip traced him, found out who he was and a couple of texts. And he entertained them. He wasn't going to go that route. He entertained them just because he thought it was, um, you know, give him kudos for digging in that far. My point in saying this is if you are, are in the camp of smaller lists, you know, two or 3,000, you're going to have to get really deep and really efficient. Um, if you go into the probates, you're going to have a hard time by just sending a letter to a probate. If you're going to go probates and that's your, that's your squeeze, great. Go all in. Now you're, you're digging into county records. You're going skip tracing on each one. You're getting relatives. You're texting them. Be careful, uh, especially with the, with the license. But, uh, and you're getting a hold of them, letting them know what service you can provide them. So it's not just as easy when you get into the list to just do the probates, the notice of defaults, the foreclosures, you know, you're not going to get very far there. You're going to spend your wheels, spend some money and maybe not have anything in return. But let's say you're in that camp and, and driving for dollars. I'll say it again, driving for dollars in the niche stuff is, is, you know, you can hire somebody 10, 12, 15 bucks an hour for that. Uh, you can do it virtually. I think uh, Deal Machine is an app that you can get on virtually and do driving for dollars through Google Street View, right? They have a Chrome extension, so that's pretty unique. So my point being is that if you're going to go niche, you're, you're not going to leverage the dollar to do more, then it's going to take some more of the, like uh, what Grant says, you know, the hustle muscle, right? You're going to have to get in there. You're going to have to get gritty. There's going to be great deals in there for you. They're, yeah. they're there. Uh, but you're, it's not going to be just send, you know, a thousand pieces to this niche once, twice and get three or four deals. You know, it, it doesn't happen that way, to, to be honest. And the guys, too, that are in that niche, you, you do need to pick one strategy that works for you. Direct mail might be your jam. You get, you get that pretty much dialed in, and then you're going to add another function on top of that to those same leads, which is texting, right? Which is cold calling after you master texting. So as soon as you can, whatever medium you, you want to go into in your marketing, in your business, whether you're a real estate agent or a direct-to-seller investor, you want to master that one. But as soon as you can get, master that, start bring, getting deals out of it, you're squared away. You can start to grow that absolutely, but be bringing another one in. I love it. Yeah. Thatch is in Seattle. He's a good friend of mine, Todd, and he actually does development. And I mean, he buys multifamily. He does, he does driving for dollars and, and you know, the whole Thatch thing. Win? Everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah I, I've seen him. Yeah. He's yeah, yeah. definitely. You guys got to connect. So, um, okay. yeah, definitely. Thatch. Is that who the question was from? I'm sorry. Was that? Yeah. A, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. From him? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thatch is, yeah, Thatch cool. absolutely yeah. crushes it. And everything you said is so spot on about you really have, we call it, we have a theory, we, my buddy Alex Lear, he talks about air, land, sea. So the idea is that, you know, you're doing mail, you're doing cold calling, and you're doing texting, and you're door knocking them, and you're, you know, who knows, right? Whatever, yeah. like, right. you're full, full attack on that niche list. You have to be because it's so competitive, right, Todd? Right. And so you need to pierce through there. Yeah, you have this little, you have a, a great, in one sense, you have a nice pool of, of targeted sellers that you can bend, you can add value to. You can add value to them if you're listing their house for them. And if you're um, a, a direct-to-seller investor, right, or the combo can add probably the most value to them. They can kind of take it either way. And to be able to put that, that tool in your toolbox. But if you need to get a hold of them, you need to get through them through to them. It just depends on how they digest media. They might be a 55 or 65 or year or older person. They don't pick up that dang phone, but they get this nice letter 
with a picture, your picture on of your family and who you are and what you do, they're going to relate to that and call you. And all calls and texts, they're just ignoring that, right? And then the next person that's in that same niche, they, they, they only like to deal with text. So you've texted them you, and you've connected with them. So if you found that you have a farm area and a niche list, and that's going to be your jam because you're a one or two person team, which let's be honest, that's the majority of us. You do need to hit that thing by land, sea, and air every which way possible and get really, really gritty with it. And at first it's kind of, it's challenging because you're, you're learning new strategies, skip tracing. What the hell is this? Where do I go? What do I do? But over time, as you pick up one tool in that toolbox and another one, you're going to quickly, quickly, quickly master that list, master that area. And if there's anything that you can spend money on in your business, it's, it's marketing and self-improvement. And it's, uh, it's never a dollar wasted ever. That's great advice. What about um, as far as let's say let's say you're 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 new to mailing, and you're testing out a market, and you're doing an absentee owner list, um, and as far as sequences, you want is there you got to hit them at least three or four three or four times, and and how how far do you space them out, and and what's the, what what would would the general advice be on you know. I'm getting into mailing. Really, this is the first time I'm doing it. I've got a budget of five thousand yeah. dollars. You know, I'm doing absentee owners in this area. How would you sequence it in general? I mean, like you know, postcard letter, postcard letter. Um, yeah. And then the last piece of that question, if you can remember all this, is what access do you put on that? Do you put your phone number? Do you put your website? Do you put your email? Do you put all of them? What What have you found to be the best? Yeah. So really, for me, my, my whole uh, reach, right, of people who I can target is probably around 30,000. Now, that's not everybody. Now, let's say your, your reach, you, you're identifying a niche or an area, and you say 5,000, let's say it's six months, so it's, it's you know, 2,000 people. And you're really going to want, for, for, for me, right, I, I'm going to deliberately know who I'm targeting and why. And so those reasons are never going to go away until they sell the house. That's one. Uh, on a niche list, a probate is going to go away, obviously, once it, it's sold. You know, there, there's some lists that, that only have a shelf life on them. There just isn't that many, however. Their only shelf life is when they get sold. And I targeted them for a reason. There's a reason I'm going after them uh, as, as far as potential of us working together. And so when it comes to the mail piece, if you have your, your target audience, you have your farm, whatever it is for you, you're wanting to be hitting those people on the niche list side every 30 days, right? Because there's some urgency there. There's a, there's a sense of urgency. There's, there's, there's things going on there that they need help with. And so there's something that could be more, but on average, it's 30 days. Now, if you're in a list that I was talking about, the identic list, right? where these, these guys are most likely to sell to you based on a series of data, uh, data points that they're likely to sell to you. And that's more of a 60, you know, 45 to 60 day interval because there's not a huge uh, push for them to do anything. You're just marketing to them because they could likely sell to you, right? And then the third one, and that absentee could be in that camp. So absentee could be in the 60, 60 day camp, 45 days, 60 day camp. Uh, to answer that question. And then there's the 55 or older. The 55 or older, I send every 90 days. Why? It's because for me, my market, that's one of the best, most fruitful deals, uh, uh, farm communities for me, because that's when people, you know, they said, okay, I'm I'm out of California. I'm done now. There's They have this house that's worth five or $600,000. And there's a lot of equity in the, and they don't want to deal with it. So that's the one I really like. And so, but I'm not going to hit that person, but every 90 days, because their, their decision cycle is very, very different. It's not, well, I'm thinking about selling and they get a postcard tomorrow. Oh, I'm going to sell. That doesn't happen in that their, their, their decision cycle is much longer. So you got to kind of think about the person. So to recap niche every 30 days, if you're in some semi-targeted list, it's, it's, it's 45 to 60 days. And if it's 55 or older, you're going to only send a letter, don't send a postcard, and you're going to send it to them every 90 days. Question on the 
On the 55 plus, are you getting that from a uh, list source? 55 plus, I still go to, uh, um, God dang it, it's hot over here. I'm losing my mind. I've been on Zoom all day long. Uh, I just said it. Uh, Audantics? No. Uh, Property Radar. Property Radar. Jeez Louise. Sorry, guys. You're doing great. Radar for me, I get it off of there. And okay. Property Radar is great. A lot of people from here are from California. So Property Radar is great and where I can tag lists, right? And see what's selling. I tag all my lists and I see what's selling so I know what to focus on. That That's another thing that you can create a bunch of lists in a software like PropStream or, or uh, Property Radar. And you can see which ones have the most solds in them. That's going to tell you what kind of properties, what kind of situations, and what areas are selling for cash in your market. And that'll give you a way to kind of hone in a little bit more. Love it. Love it. So question, Todd, on that, because we're, we're into lists a little bit. Um, yeah. Do you have a list stacking product or do we you do. recommend one or do you use one? We do. Ours is good, and, uh, but I'll be quite honest with you. Ours is is getting better and better, but ours is good. Um, so we have one at yellowletterhq.com, um, and there's a list stacking software in there. But some of the ones that have been around a while that are really robust and great, uh, Property List Manager, PLM, right? Okay. PLM is a great one. Uh, batch Lead Stacker. Those guys at Batch are doing good work over there. They, they have one. Um, and ours, for if you just do direct mail only, ours is, is really good. But um, if you're into a, a bunch of different things, those those two PLM batch lead stacker are really really good uh, lead stackers for sure. I love it. I love your authenticity. It's like I have one. It's good for mail. But then, yeah. Then, again, Todd is so straight up, and that's again that's what I love about you. One of the many things. So keep going with questions, Bo. Okay. So, um, look, can we talk about your service, um, your company a little bit? Um, is it, is it pretty automated? I mean, can it, can somebody that's just getting started go on and say, hey, I'm doing an absentee owner list where, where you have some recommended kind of templated yellow letters that they can kind of plug and play and test? Absolutely. So if you go to yellowletterhq.com, you can go on and you can pick letters or postcards, whatever suits you, and you're going to hit a tab that says tutorial. And that tutorial is going to take you, we just have drop down tabs, right? And you can select what you want from the drop down tabs. You can go into the upload box and give us a picture of something that you want us to recreate for you. We can do that. And then there's going to be a box of any other details you uh, would want from us on that. Uh, in that order, you can upload different lists. So let's say you had your absentee list, your probate list, your um, expires list, but you want to put it all into one campaign because when you do direct mail with anybody, the more you send, the less it is. And you can do that into our system. You can upload all three of those lists. You can put your unique phone number for each one. So you're tracking where these leads are coming from. And our upload tool will bring that in, compile that list for you, scrub all of that data for a few things. First, it's going to scrub all the duplicates and take all those off. So you're not paying for those. It's going to take that data and, and refer it to the post office database to make sure that those properties are still accepting mail so you don't get a bunch of return mail. Will you always get return mail? Yes, you will, but we can help you get less. And then it does some neat features like you know things that are in the trust, like you got Ontiveros Trust 1997. And every trust, at least that I've ever seen, has the, the, the last name first and then all the contents after it. So our tool takes that and says, okay, we're going to we're gonna append this for you. We're going to make this Ontiveros family, make it more personalized. So it does all that for you automatically, and it puts that number in the cart for you, and you can check out. Next week, we're going to have some good tools where you can make that campaign reoccur on its own just by with a click of a button, some cool stuff. So, But as far as direct mail houses are concerned, um, ours, our website is definitely one of the easiest to use. And anytime you have any problem, just call or, or email us and we'll help you out. I love it. So let's talk about now. I know a lot of guys are going out and buying, you know, fancy cars and stuff. And uh, tell us about your Lamborghini. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I was with Don Costa uh, at his mastermind. And so we rented Lamborghinis. And so I was, I'm a car guy, but I'm not necessarily that kind of car guy. 
But man, a after I drove that car, that's all I could think about. And I wanted to buy a Lamborghini. Uh, but instead, what we were finding out that is um, in a time, especially in a time right now, whether you're in a ton of competition or a situation like COVID, authenticity wins, right? And we're seeing that in marketing. We're seeing that in, in every professional organization. You're still professional, but authenticity wins 10 times out of 10. And so we're seeing response rates, you know, on postcards, right, is about half a percent, not great. But at 36 cents a pop, you're looking at not necessarily your response rate, but your ROI. And then you're going to bump that up to a letter, a uh, printed letter, authentic looking, handwritten font, all that kind of stuff. And what you're doing there is trying to capture attention in that mail stack. That's, that's great. That's going to get you about a percent. But we did spend over a Lamborghini's worth, and I just posted on our Yellow Letter HQ Tips and Tricks, uh, Yellow Letter HQ Tips and Tricks Facebook page, where we're setting up all of our handwriting machines that will be available next week. And this actually, this these machines actually take a pen, right? And they write just like you and I were sitting down at our desk writing uh, letters to somebody, and when a seller sees that, right, it's grabbing their attention. Who in the world gets letters anymore? Nobody, right? But when you do, because that doesn't happen anymore, it's special. It, it means something. It means something more. And so we're seeing 2 to 3% response rates on that. And I have clients that are sending upwards of 50,000 to 60,000 uh, handwritten uh, postcards and letters a month. And they just, it's, it's not as cheap as, as the other stuff but they can't believe uh, what's happening to the marketing on that business with that, that, uh, that response rate. So it's, it's really authentic, it captures their attention. Remember, that's what you're doing with the mail piece. You're capturing their attention. You're giving them a short, concise message. They're digesting it, identifying a need, and they're either calling you right there or they're putting that thing away when the time is, is, is right for them. So yeah, that's what we're doing with the handwriting stuff. It's really, really, really cool. And I can't wait to, to get into it because anytime I can help uh, myself or my customers, friends, and clients uh, get more deals, man, it's rad. So I love it. I love it. So I love how I love how two things. So I'm talking about a car, and then I love how deep into detail Todd goes into. He didn't buy a Lamborghini, guys and gals. He took that Lamborghini cash and he reinvested it back into his business. That's such a big distinction. And especially now, I think, Todd, especially right now as we're in this COVID transition, you know, for people right now, the people that double down and reinvest back into their business, whether that's direct mail or maybe airline C, they're doing the driving for dollars, they're staffing up, they're scaling. This is the time to do that. Tell me your thoughts specifically about the timing in the market share, the mind share, like really reinvesting your business, why that's so critical right now. Just some of your thoughts on that. Yeah, well, here's one thing I think I could provide the most value to anybody right now in this space is because I have a front row seat to what's happening. And that's in my revenue for my business. Let's just be quite honest. So half of your competition on the direct to seller game is F word non-existent. They're, they disappeared right now. They're gone. They're not mailing. They're not doing anything because there's there were so many, you know, whether it be a investor from a guru seminar or an agent who just got got their license, right, trying to get into the game, they're they're gone. And so who is left are people who are uh, been around a little while, right? And um, a lot of the noise is gone. So it's a be better time than than ever right now to start gearing up up. For what's happening out there. Sellers, especially right now, we talked about lists, right? Well, right now, let's think about it. Now, the the absentee owner has been the most hammered list out there. But at the same time, the absentee owner is 50% of the people or more are not mailing to them. And right now, they're under more pressure than ever, right? They're under way more pressure than they ever have been before. And so now you have a value to them. You can help them sell that property that, that, that in, in a unique position where maybe there's a, a, a tenant not paying. Maybe you can buy it for cash, right? And then there's another segment that's been happening a lot over the past five or six years all over the country where people are buying investment properties at their 401k. And maybe 
not at their 401k as well. Maybe there's, you know, just they're becoming a recreational landlord. Well, the first thing that happens to them when things get tough like this, they're going to want to sell that, that property. And that, that investor doesn't get targeted to, right? And they're, they're not getting targeted to right now. But I can tell you what, they're the most likely, okay, they have 20 or 30% equity on that property. And they're like, okay, I did this experiment. It was fun. The first time they don't get that, that rent check, they're like, you know, hey, I knew, I'm a doctor, I'm a lawyer, I, I work for, for the government. I don't want this kind of crap. I'm done. And so you can be a value to them. You can put some money in their pocket and, and, um, be, and target a, a seller that maybe hasn't been targeted yet or even targeted now, but you can add a ton of value to it. So that's my favorite little, it's the kind of a niche, not really, because it's pretty, you know, it's just, it's just, we're just using logic here, right? And that's one of the best little uh, nugs I, I can give you on top of knowing that your competition is, is scared right now. They're not participating. They're not investing. They're not working on themselves. And it's, it's a, hey, it's okay. I'm scared. It, it's a weird thing that's going on right now. But the, the good investors, the, the guys that, that are going to be killing it in this next phase are starting right now. And they're, they're digging in deep. And so an investment now in marketing could pay div dividends three, six, eight months from now, as this potentially, we don't know, hopefully not, but potentially could get worse. And so you're, you're planting seeds right now in your marketing that they pay dividends. And that's the hardest thing we do as business owners, because A, we want shit right now. We do marketing, we spend money, we want results. What the hell? That's how we operate. That's who we are. But really, we have, to, we have to understand in our marketing, no matter what phase you're doing, whether it's text, cold call, uh, direct mail, the seeds and the revenue that's going to be coming from the marketing today could be three, four, five, six, seven, eight months down the line. I still get sellers calling me from letters I sent them three or four years ago. It happens. So, so, so participating now is, is a great thing. We have half, half of the market share out of the game. Focusing on yourself and your marketing um, and your your business right now is, is it's everything in my opinion. And Todd, do you have a hard stop at seven thirty, or can we go a little over? You're good. I'm good. Yeah, I'm at home. I'm not at the shop. I'm usually at home doing these things, but today was, I'm at home, so we're good. Cool. Yeah. Bo. Okay. Um, so some of uh, um, the the people that are watching are in multifamily, and so. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about like the mom and pop, like say 10 to 30 unit properties. How have you seen that effectively marketed to using direct mail? Uh, I know it's going to be different than maybe the yellow letters or is it going to be, I mean, how, how, how would we set that up initially? Kind of what's the thought process there? The thought process there is a little more sophisticated seller, right? And so, um, you know, maybe they're not going to respond so much to, uh, a yellow letter or urgent, you know, postcard property notification, urgent stuff like that. You're really going to want to be transparent. Let them know who you are. Uh, a lot of, a lot of, not with the agent community, but with the direct -to seller community. And there's, there's the agent community, there's a direct -to seller community, and then those that are, they're both. Um, and so you really want to communicate to, to them in a mom and pop professional manner. You might be an agent. You might have a big brokerage. That's fine. You can say that. But your approach to them doesn't necessarily have to be, hey, I, I'm a Remax, you know, top producer, all that kind of stuff, or nothing. Hey, I'm, I'm going to come and buy your 20 unit, you know, cash. It's, hey, uh, this is who I am. This is the service that I offer to you. Uh, we can structure all kinds of different ways to, to buy the, this property from you. I know when, when it comes into that space, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm mostly in the, the single family two to four unit. We do do some stuff in this space. Um, and so that space leaves an opportunity for all kinds of different exit strategies. You create a financing terms, whether it be, you know, you, you, you don't do that and you buy it cash or traditional methods. And you want to list those things that you can do for them and how you can do it and how it's easier to sell, right? So just be very, very transparent, very, very clear, and, and you know, testimonial too. And that that seller doesn't get a postcard. 
that seller gets a one to two page letter. One page letter maybe saying, hey, handwritten note, something very authentic. Hey, I want to talk to you about such and such property. Uh, and by the way, here's a circular. Uh, and there's a, there's a second page. It tells you all about me and how what how what I what I do can what I can offer you. Sorry, if I can get the words out. How I can offer you and make a sale really easy, right? And so it's just a word doc with a picture of you and your family and all of the ways that you can help them and, and testimonial. It's really evergreen and it's really um, just more pragmatic than we all give it credit to. We, you know, we listen to these Dan, the Dan Kennedy's great marketers, by the way, and those guys are really, really uh, focused on 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 some stuff, but really. We're we're buying properties. We're not we're not selling a shoe. We're not selling um, a commodity. We're not going to be able to convince a seller to sell to us. We're just going to be available to them and be somebody who they know, like, and trust because we marketed to them and somebody that they feel is approachable uh, for them. That's all we're doing. We're getting noticed, giving them a clear, simple message, being somebody that they might want to do business with. When the time is right for them, they're going to contact, and that's all we can do. And so getting into the weeds and, and what do we send? How do we send it? Just be authentic, be you. And, and that's the absolute best advice uh, I could give on, on that subject because that's one of the more overthought um, situations of what do I send? How do I send it? Uh, be you, let them know how you can help them. And in an environment where there's many units, I mean, they probably own them a long time, you know, the units you said 10 to 20 to 30, somewhere up, up in there, right? Yeah. 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 And just a mom and pop professional, somebody they, they can deal with. They're not dealing, they're not a big REIT, they're not uh, a hedge fund. They've just made some good decisions in their life and they could be a part of an investment group. But nine times out of 10, they're, you know, they're not. Uh, even investment groups want to deal with mom and pop professionals. As long as you know, you can, they know that you can execute on what you say that you're going to do for them. So, I think that would be the best way to answer. And and, and uh, just the last question I have for you is um, going back to the question we asked a while ago. What would you recommend as what we should put on as far as the call to action? Should it be to call? Should it be a combination of call? Here's my email. Here's my website. Contact me. I mean, what have you seen that seems to work the best? I know it probably depends, but. Well, what are your recommendations there? Yeah, I mean, that one kind of depends on who you talk to. And so my personal belief is I want to be searchable, especially in, in, in an environment of competition. I want to be searchable to my seller. I want them to see me online, see houses I've done, go to my Facebook page. There's the other school of thoughts that says, hey, I don't want them going to that and getting lost and then not calling me. Right? So there's two schools of thought on that, and you have to decide which one's appropriate for you. I would say the best way to kind of bridge those two is to maybe have a Facebook page and or say, hey, when you're available, would you give me a text, please, so we can talk about this property? And so they can easily start talking and communicating with you, right? So if they don't want to uh, go through all the work of digging you up, they can just start a text conversation with you and, and start that investigation there. Hey, where can you can you show me your website? Can you Tell me a little bit more about yourself and just open up the invitation. So I think I would keep it simple. I think I would put my uh, phone number on there. And if I'm going to that kind of a marketplace and I'm a one, two or three or four man show, right? Uh, and I'm, I'm marketing to somebody with 10, 20, 30 units. I want them to contact me directly. And so I want to put my cell phone on there or a way that, you know, the message comes to my cell phone and you can start the conversation uh, like that. So, for me, uh, I would bridge the gap by putting a, a phone number on that they could get a hold of me right away. I love it. Yeah, I you. love it. I love it. That that actually, I just have two questions for you. And so you, we we talked about data. We talked about the mail piece, and then we talked about the sales process. And you know, it's interesting too. I want to give a shout out. Um, Adrian Hernandez is here. I think he oh, just yeah. did a piece with you. Um, I want to say in the last uh, three weeks, four weeks for the month of April. And I want to say he got three listings from it and then one uh, investment deal. So awesome. four mailings, or, excuse me, four deals from a mailing of, I think it was about 10 to 13,000 pieces. So 
Um, shout out to Adrian. I think that was the first time he did mail with you. I see Don Costa's on here. I see Ramel. I see a bunch of really good people. So thank you guys for tuning in and staying in with us. So we talked about data. We talked about the mail pieces, the sales process. What like, and you talked about like, okay, your cell phone number. When you see people that are having success, what what is the best method for sales process when they're calling in, taking that call, having a hotline for the, the people you work with that are having the real conversion and converting and getting deals that keep coming back and mailing with you month after month after month? Maybe just go into a little bit of a best practices for sales process. Right. Yeah, so I can't go into necessarily best practices on sales process. That's not my thing. John Martinez, uh, that guy kills it on that. But I will say, when it comes to pick, when it comes to the initial process, right? Uh, I don't know a single investor um, that doesn't have somebody picking up that phone. And it used to be to where you're trying to filter people through voice ma- voicemails and things like that. Those day, those days for me, my belief is those are long gone. So you need to have somebody picking up that phone. I even have investors, um, uh, ones here in San Diego is actually my most consistent uh, customer, uh, client and friend. Um, he has somebody like on night shift, right? When the, those mail, when the mail drop comes in, at least for mail and for, even for a PPC, the, he has with his team, they, they trade off. So up until eight, nine o'clock at night, they're answering that phone call. It might be a short, short and sweet. Hey, man, really appreciate this call. Yeah, I got this property address. Can we set an appointment? It's kind of late. Is this something you want to talk about now or can we talk about it at such and such time tomorrow? The fact of the matter is picking up that phone call allows that seller to go check, right? Check the box. Okay, I have somebody who's going to help me with this problem. I have somebody who I can, I can kind of see what's happening. So now there's the other school of thought of going to a voicemail. Uh, there's other school of thought of a pat lies, which they'll have their place. And maybe if you're running a, such a big operation that your staff can't pick up that call, goes to pat lie, well, okay, but then you're calling their asses right back, right? And they're following up with the text messages that they don't pick up. So I can say unequivocally, they are on that lead right the F word away. They are on it. And that is going to, that will make or break you, especially in a competitive market, even though half of your competition is gone right now, there's still competition out there. And people want, want that one-on-one uh, service, you know, and it, you don't have to, to go into your full sales process with them right then and there. You're just touching it. Hey, thank you for the phone call, man. I really appreciate it. I was hoping you, you called me about this property and I'm glad you did. So let's let's set a time that we can talk about this at what time's good for you tomorrow, 10 or 11. And you touched them, you made a contact, you get off the phone with them, you text them again, thank you for that call, looking for looking forward to you tomorrow. That one action, you know, I mean, if, if you're a if you're a one-man shop, which a lot of us are, and that's okay, at 7:30 at night, like it is right now, it kind of takes some guts to do. And fuck, I don't want to have to pick this up. I'm playing with my kids. But that five minutes, boom, boom, off done. That momentum building and picking up that phone or having a system to do that uh, is key. It cannot be, that one cannot be overstated. I love it. I love it. And so I got one more question, but I want to just one more time tell people about your Facebook group. Cause I think, I think the Facebook group, you give so much value. You show good demos, you have lots of engagement. So tell them the Facebook group and then also tell them again the website, how to get a hold of you. Sure. Yeah, so the Facebook group, the Facebook group is one that I just started a few weeks ago, and uh, um, it's mainly just some of our customers now. But it's Yellow Letter HQ Tips and Tricks, right? And um, you can go there, ask for permission. We'll bring you on in. And our website is yellowletterhq.com. Yellowletterhq.com. You can call us, you can email us, you can uh, Facebook message me if some of this went over your head. We, we can talk about it a little bit and I can let you know how to get into that Facebook page too if, if, if you lost it. But that's, a, that's the best way to get a hold of me. I love it. And then so we'll post actually, Bo, we'll post something in our, in our group on the link underneath the video, the comments on how to get a hold of you as well. So, so Todd, let me add like, so. I, knowing my audience, we've got people that are doing maybe as an example, um, people that are doing 
maybe between listings and wholesaling investments because we have a lot of hybrid people that yeah. are both agents and and investors. So we have probably on average, I would say the majority of our audience are is in that category and they're doing three to five, maybe sometimes more, but let's call yeah. it three to five deals a month. Right. Half of them, maybe more of them, 80% of them are listings. The other are, are wholesale deals. Um, right. And then we have some new people. We have people that are brand new. They're just getting into the business and you know they're doing a lot of cold calling and things like that because they have lower budgets. So it's specifically on how to get started in mail. And I think just kind of throwing in my two cents is I believe that you need to have a strategy where you're going to be consistent and that at least you're, you know, you're month in and month out executing, but for your clients who are on the entry level, you know, that are maybe on that lower level, just getting, not getting started, but they've been with you six months, a year, they're consistent. What's a good budget. And I know it's subjective based on where they're at, but just kind of realistically, what should somebody in their mind be thinking to be consistent in doing this budget wise budget wise again it's, it's real tough but if if you're just starting out and you're hustling like all get out to 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 build the, the dream that, that we're all trying to make you know that first thing i started off with the freedom of time money and relationship we all fit in there somewhere right and you know you gotta you gotta hustle and so you're you're brand new you're hustling uh there is nothing wrong with doing again Deal machine. Um, there's a few other driving for dollars apps out there starting there for both listings, right? Listings and for um, direct to seller type stuff. Then from there, it's the uh, vacant properties, right? And if you targeted those two vacant properties in, in, in your little farm area that you want to target and driving for dollars, and you spent anywhere from Five hundred to fifteen hundred dollars a month on that, and you could afford to do that for at least six months. You're gonna you're gonna see an ROI intensive of at least fifteen to tw uh, twenty times on your dough because it's such a niche, right? And there's 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 only so much dough that you're, you're spending, and so you're gonna be ROI intensive. You're going to I don't want to say double that lead flow, but it's, you're gonna add quite a few more deals to to that mix and start building that momentum there. So I love those two, um, both the vacants of any means and the um, for dollars and having that 500. If, don't guys, I don't want to say don't because in some areas this does work and you'll know if it does, but don't be in Southern California and spend $500 on marketing to an absentee list because that's what you heard or it makes sense or even absence at a state. If you have that kind of budget, that's there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, be very strategic with it. Be very, very deliberate and know who you're marketing to and spend that extra time doing the driving for dollars. I know it sounds ridiculous, but some of my best investors are they're really turning and really turning that dollar into more dollars, having dollar babies, right? is by for driving for dollars and um, being really intentional with, with that that market. So I, I would say $1,500, $500 to $1,500 a month. I love it. I love it, dude. So thank you for your authenticity. Thank you for your time. I can tell you had a long day, dude, and you gave us, you gave us everything, man. You were sharing, you're caring, you're authentic, you're straight up as right. always. I appreciate your time here. Thank you, Bo. Bo, take us out. All right. That was, that's so awesome. And, and you know what, I, I always just looked at before you presented tonight, I looked at direct mail as just like, okay, I'm going to send to a list, right? Like I didn't put any thought into it other than, and that's why, it, you know, I got great response, but if I actually th like think about it and break it down and really dive deep, it's like, that's how you're going to get, that's how you're going to be successful with it. Right. And, and the great thing about like your company, I, I don't have to, I think about it in the beginning and I put it on autopilot and all I have to worry about is fielding the phone call or the email that comes in. That's it. Once it's set up. So, so really it might be two hours set up in the beginning or less. Right. And then boom, you can automate for the whole year and tweak it as you go. I'm, but, but yeah, I just, I just, you know, it's amazing getting so uh, granular with like the details. And I think I, I really thank you for your time with it. Cause it's like, 
it just made me think like what I'm doing in Indiana or what I could be doing in Indiana. Like I could literally be hitting them like in the next week with letters and the phone be ringing off the hook. And now I just need Ty to answer the phone and close the deal for me. And I'm good. Well, you got to get closer to theirs to be no problem. Oh, is that a flip phone? I got, yeah, that's that. When this thing rings, I know it's a hotline bling. I know when they both ring, I know, Oh shit, that's a money call, man. I'm going <laughs> to, we got to get, flip phone. that's amazing. <laughs> We're doing, Ty and I are putting on a, a, a Las Vegas mastermind pool party when COVID, hopefully sometime soon. We'd love for you to come by and, sure. and join the mastermind as soon as we get out of our houses and we'll have some freedom. <laughs> Sounds good, guys. Thank you guys for having me. If any of the audience needs my help, you know how to get a hold of me and best of luck to everybody during this time. All right. Thank you.